important. And I think it's one that existed even before the pandemic. I mean, a lot of people have been really looking at this because our, our legacy is so much about one-on-one -on -one instruction between a faculty member and a student in a physical space. And the question becomes, what do we really value about that interaction and how do we use distance learning and remote opportunities in a way that doesn't compromise the kind of engagement students have with faculty? I think there are a number of opportunities there. One that I mentioned uh, was uh, remote teaching that we did with a design office for T-Mobile in Seattle. They were three hours uh, time difference from our, our program. And it took coordination between the resident faculty and the T-Mobile staff to really make that work. It meant that the time that they spent in remote learning had to be really used well. Um, these poor people in Seattle were teaching at 7 a.m. and uh, <laughs> were brave and got up early to do that uh, as a volunteer effort. And uh, it meant that the students had to be really prepared, that they had to have a regular stream of communication with those people um, in between the times when they were meeting by Zoom. And we developed some evaluation methods that allowed the students in the class to be evaluating the presentations at the same time that the team in Seattle was looking at the presentations online. And so when a student um, filled out a, a kind of evaluation rubric for that presenter, when the presenter sat down, uh, he or she had 16 or 17 evaluations instantly at their fingertips having just made the presentation. So what we weren't spending time online with were the kinds of things that could be communicated through digital means and didn't have to be talked through completely uh, in person. Um, we also do a lot of work in terms of uh, summary books and research presentations. Uh, I mentioned in some notes that we'll do these three by seven foot panels on research presentations. Um, and it's important, I think, that the process oriented work not take second place to the finished work in these digital formats. So someone has to be able to step into that process oriented work um, in the conversations with students and really understand what's going on. And that means that there has to be a certain amount of finish to the process stuff so that you can actually talk about it and, and evaluate that along with the kind of final product that's easy to send across line. Um, I also think that uh, students have gotten pretty good at the collaborative work. Uh, a lot of our students will invent uh, ways of, of negotiating teams, uh, keeping update, archiving work online, even when they're in the studio. Um, so that's kind of a natural behavior for that generation. And uh, making that available to the faculty, you know, kind of eavesdropping on that is really helpful in understanding what's going on in the progress of a project uh, as you go along. So I think, I think the catch here is not try, try to completely duplicate what the studio experience is like, but look at what technology is really good for and use it to the best advantage in those situations.